Hey, what's up, guys? Explanation Pro is here. Today, I'll explain a comedy superhero film titled Superhero Movie. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with Rick Ricker running after a bus because he has been left behind. The bus stops and Rick hits the side mirrors, then the stop sign, and then finally the doors of the bus. Inside, he finds his crush, Jill Johnson, but he cannot sit with her because she doesn't even know him. He sits instead with his friend, Trey. He tells Rick not to think about Jill because she belongs to a group. The class took a field trip to a research laboratory. There, the class sees genetically engineered animals. Rick, a photographer, tries to talk to Jill but misses his chance to further the conversation. When Rick takes a picture of the bird, the scientist warns too late not to have a flash photography. And so, the flash burns the bird. He tries to take out the flame but he kicks the bird instead to a guy, Lance, who is dating Jill. But Lance gets stopped by his uncle. Lou Landers, who is the owner of the facility. After Landers talks to him, Rick gets pushed by Lance who piles of poop. Rick attempts to wash it away with what he assumed was water, but it was actually animal attracting liquid. Soon, animals approach Rick to hump with all their might. Even the snail wants to party. Rick also gets bitten by a radioactive dragonfly instead of the usual spider. That night, Rick gets homesick. Meanwhile, the same night, Landers presents his new invention to a group of investors. He tells them that the new machine alters DNA, but upon trying it, it fails. An investor ridicules Landers up close, but when he touches that bald investor, he sucks the life out of him. Landers regains new strength and proceeds to suck the other's investor's life off of them. The next day, Rick wakes up but finds the heaviness of yesterday gone. He tries to search for symptoms of a dragonfly bite on the internet, but instead, the computer finds out he's still a virgin through a series of questions. He then sees his crush at the house next door before finally going down to eat. Later that day, Stephen Hawking is introduced to the students. Stephen Hawking tells them something inspiring first but then offers them to smoke hash instead. Meanwhile, Rick wants to confess to Jill already, but his hands get stuck on the faucet. The faucet breaks loose and he hits Lance at the back of his head. Lance fights Rick, a commotion starts, and Stephen Hawking gets thrown headfirst to killer bees. Afterwards, Rick goes to an alley where he sticks his hands again. This time, he attempts to climb the walls and dances like it's a step-up movie. After this, Rick hears a scream. A truck driver had lost control of his truck. When it is about to hit an old lady and her dog, Rick jumps in to push the old lady and her dog out of the way. The crowd cheers Rick for saving the old lady, kind of. The old lady and her dog are pushed toward a wood chipper, but hey, at least she did not get run over. That night, Rick gets home to find Trey and his uncle just finishing some furniture work. When he entered the house, Rick almost gets shot by a nail gun, but he catches it instead, telling his astonished uncle that it is easy. His uncle does not believe it, so he shoots at Trey's hand to prove it's not easy. Rick confesses that he thinks he now has superpowers, but he does not want to have one. His uncle reminds him what his parents want for him, but Rick goes outside in frustration. Outside, Rick looks at the ring his father gave him and remembers them. In a flashback, Rick and his parents got robbed in an alley, but Rick tries to save them but it did more harm than it good. Because when Rick tries to steal the gun, it fired and still hit his parents indirectly. With his last breath, Rick's father gives him the ring. After the flashback, Rick talks to Jill who had just gotten out of the house after a fight with her parents. Jill tells Rick that maybe she could take a ride in his car. The next day, Rick tries to search for a car that is worth $300 but cannot find any. He then sees an advert for a loan and is also contacted by Professor X regarding his superpowers telling him to come meet him. He then goes to a bank with his aunt to ask her a loan. He gets rejected for a loan because he has no working background. Just then, a robber enters the bank. Rick stupidly assists the robber after he has trouble getting outside the door. The man who rejects Rick tells him that he had helped the robber take their money, but Rick responds smugly that it is not his problem anymore. Afterwards, Rick hears a gunshot from outside. He sees his uncle's car, but his uncle is not there. He sees instead a crowd next to the car. Upon approaching the crowd, he sees a monkey dancing and feels relieved. His uncle is actually beside a crowd and no one cares. Rick's uncle is hospitalized. That night, Landers learns that he ages fast and must suck others' life, which he does to his assistant. Meanwhile, walking home from the hospital, Rick finally met Professor X. Telling Rick to follow him, Professor X tours him to his school, where they meet powered students and teachers alike. While constantly changing chairs, Professor X tells him that he can tell him the secret to being a superhero. But before he can tell him, Professor X gets interrupted by his wife, who admonishes Professor X for cheating on her with an invisible woman. 
Similar to him, Professor X's wife and kids all have wheelchairs. After Professor X gets thrown by his son's psychic powers, Professor X's wife instructs Rick to create a costume. That night, Rick creates a design for his costume. After countless iterations, he finally designed and created one. When Trey enters the room, he gets amazed because Rick actually looks like a superhero now. And so, Rick, or Dragonfly, goes to the top of the building to oversee the city. However, the Human Torch wants to remove him there because Rick is sitting on his gargoyle. At first, they tried to share, but then they decided not to continue because it is awkward. The Human Torch then shows his powers by making himself on fire. However, he can't deactivate it. Rick tries to take out the fire with a blanket, fire extinguisher, and gasoline that Rick mistakes for water. The Human Torch then falls down. Afterwards, Rick attempts to fly, but still cannot do it. Afterwards, after learning that he has to kill every day to live every day and that the only way to stop this is by using Cerulean, Lander's devise a plan to steal it. Meanwhile, Rick applies for a job as a photographer of Dragonfly, offering the boss some pictures of Dragonfly himself. But Rick immediately leaves upon hearing a standoff in school. There, like Dragonfly, Rick faces Lander's alter ego, the Hourglass. The two fight each other, with Rick getting hit by tree blades, but eventually, Lander has escaped. That night, Rick talks to Jill and gives her flowers, but Rick still does not tell her about his secret identity. Jill leaves disappointed, but Rick sees her get followed by a group of men in an alley. There, Dragonfly arrives and successfully beats up the men. Rick attempts to kiss Jill while upside down like a spider, but decides to do it while on the ground. Meanwhile, Lander's having taken the Cerulean sees how many lives it will take for him to suck to achieve immortality. He grins at the possibility of being immortal by sucking. Afterwards, during the Thanksgiving night at Rick's home, Jill assists Rick's aunt in preparing the food. Jill's companion, Lance, soon arrives, but Lance is also with his uncle Landers. Landers then decides to fetch Rick from his room upstairs. Rick, on the other hand, has just got inside in his room while still wearing Dragonfly attire. Before Rick gets to pee, Landers rudely enters his room to look for him. What follows is an entertaining game of hide and seek, where Rick tries his hardest to hide despite peeing all over the place. Landers goes down feeling defeated. Rick finally enters the house through the front door to make it look like as if he just arrived. There, they eat. Landers, however, sees Rick's wound on his left arm, which is similar to where his blade have earlier hit Dragonfly's body. Landers tries to interrogate him and leaves with Lance immediately afterwards. With his aunt asleep, Rick decides to grab the opportunity to have time with Jill. After some sweet exchanges, the two try to kiss each other but Rick's aunt farts like a smelly jet turbine. Worse, the hourglass explosively enters the scene and, and captures Rick's aunt. Rick is knocked out cold. Afterwards, at the hospital, Rick learns that his aunt is dead. After telling Rick not to tell his uncle yet about his aunt's death, the doctor nonchalantly tells it's Rick's uncle anyway. The next day, a funeral is conducted for Rick's aunt. His uncle is devastated, so much that he jumps to his dead wife's coffin. But it's actually the wrong wife, which makes his uncle more unwillingly to leave. After Rick's uncle is forcefully removed from another woman's body, Rick's aunt falls to fire and gets cremated instead. After that chaotic funeral, Jill approaches Rick, but Rick does not want to talk to her anymore because it's not safe anymore for anyone connected to him. He leaves Jill. After this, while All By Myself plays in the background, Rick finds that the path to home is filled with lovers kissing even inanimate objects. Rick falls into depression, but he is picked up again by his uncle who encourages him to be a hero again. Rick accepts but does not know where the hourglass could be. Then they see the news about an awarding ceremony for humanitarian achievement where people are gathered in thousands and conclude that the hourglass might be there. In the awarding ceremony, Landers received an award. After receiving it, he is confronted by Rick backstage to ask him who the hourglass could possibly be. The hourglass takes this opportunity to mislead Rick into attacking the Dalai Lama. As the curtain opens, the Dalai Lama is seen being assaulted by Dragonfly. Rick strips him, wanting to find the ceruleum he supposedly has stolen. After a guard gets thrown off from the stage, a fight among the peaceful crowd ensues, as leading humanitarian world figures brawl with each other. Rick then sees the hourglass escape to the other room, where they are hosting a hero's convention. There, the hourglass sits on a flying chair and proceeds to blast a piece of the ceiling. It falls down toward Rick, but manages to carry and throw it away, only to drop on him again. The hourglass then throws a blade toward Rick to kill him, but Jill saves him by letting herself get hit instead. Stephen Hawking, who is in the event, motivates Dragonfly to stop Hourglass with a Celine Dion lyric. Upon the roof, the Hourglass launches his machine. Rick, carrying Jill, touches the Hourglass to bring life to Jill. After Jill wakes up, the Hourglass throws a bomb at Rick, and the bomb gets stuck on his hand. After readjusting it, sticking into his crotch, 
he decides to tumble his way to the hourglass and explodes, tossing Jill off the roof. Because he has armor, Rick is alive. However, he has to save Jill from falling down the building, but he cannot fly. While falling, Jill finds out that Rick is the dragonfly via his ring. Because of this, Jill kisses Rick, and Rick gains dragonfly wings. Then they safely fly upward. Stephen Hawking thanks Dragonfly, but poor Stephen gets pushed by Rick's uncle off the building. The movie ends with Rick and Jill flying in the sky, with Rick happily narrating that he is Dragonfly. But this gets interrupted by a passing helicopter. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.